Hi, yeah. Here we are with uh, assignment two, question three A, and we're basically given something slightly different from the previous questions of assignment two, which is basically the second derivative of x plus the first derivative of x minus six x is equal to sixteen. We are actually generally not used to having something on the right hand side till now, and that's why this sort of makes it slightly trickier. But we we can we still have to apply the knowledge we learned from question one and two. So we're going to go ahead and start with that, just to keep it sort of familiar so you guys don't panic right away. Uh, well, I'm hoping no one's panicking. Anyway, so what you go ahead and do is assume that this was 0. So you'd have an equation some, as x double prime plus x prime minus 6x is equal to 0. So basically, you're going to solve for the homogeneous equation to get part of the answer for x. Uh, so we'll do this normally, so we take the same we take m to the power of 2 since that's the second derivative plus m to the power of 1 since that's the first derivative minus 6 is equal to 0 so this is basic solving for this um, b squared minus 4ac will give you uh, 1 uh, minus 4 minus multiply by minus 6 multiply by 1 which is equal to 25 you just do a simple minus b plus root delta, this is equal to delta people, all over 2a, which will be a minus 1 plus 5, plus or minus 5, sorry, all over 2, which is then either minus 6 over 2, which is minus 3, or it's um, 4 over 2 which is equal to 2. So your m1 is negative 3 and your m2 is 2. And now since this was greater than 0 we can automatically assume that our complementary, now this is called the complementary equation, um, is actually equal to c1 e to the power of m1t plus c2 e to the power of m2t. So we found our m1 and m2, so we can just go ahead and substitute that in right here, uh, which is basically minus 3t multiplied by 2t. So that's the basic part, stuff we learned previously in the equation. I'm just going to erase all this because we really need a decent amount of space for the next part of the question. I'm going to rewrite this equation. Sorry, that's minus 3t. I'm just going to rewrite this equation up here so we can remember it as we need it for our final answer. So C2 e to the power of 2t. I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. And now is the slightly tricky part. Now there, there are a couple of things. The, the way you approach the equation is dependent on the right hand side completely. Now since this is 6t or in the form of um, a t squared plus b t plus c, basically um, nothing exponential, nothing to do with uh, sine, cosine. We have to make an assumption um, related to x being equal to uh, equations such as a t squared plus b t plus c, something like this. Now, in this, generally, the general consensus from what I know is you normally look at the power of t and you only go as far as that. So in this case, we're just going to stick with bt plus c. Um, this is, however, not always right. You will notice by the time you're nearing the end of the solution that this might be giving you a wrong answer, and that's when you have to change and sort of make another assumption. Uh, but for this equation, for this particular one, you should be fine. Uh, but we'll show you an example later on. On, uh, well, the next couple of questions you'll see a couple examples on when the general solution that the assumption might not be true. So by making this um, assumption, we basically have to substitute this value into x, uh, x prime, x double prime. So we have to first find the derivative of x. So our derivative of x would be, uh, the first derivative of x would be b, uh, and the second derivative would be 0. Right? So now what we're going to do is actually substitute all three of these in over here. So we're going to get a 0 plus a b 
minus 6 times bt plus c is equal to 6t. Now we're going to rearrange it so that we can group everything by the power of t it's closest to. So basically it'd be all the six, all the constants grouped together and all the multiples of t is grouped together. And I'll just show you how we're going to do that right away. So get everything to the left hand side so you get b minus. We're going to go ahead and simplify that 6bt minus 6c is equal to 6, oh sorry, minus 6t is equal to 0. So if you notice, there are two, two parts, which uh, basically two um, elements of this equation have uh, t's in it uh, to the power of 1, and two have t's to the power of 0. Well, t to the power of 0 is hypothetically 1, but I'm just saying it so it, you can sort of get an idea of how to group them. So we'll get all the ones with without a t on one side. So you have b uh, minus 6c. And we'll get these two together on one side also. So you have minus 6b minus 6, um, all multiplied by t is equal, oh, sorry, plus. Now, basically, <clears throat> what you're going to go ahead and do from here is solve for both of these equaling 0. So you have your minus 6b. Um, Sorry about that. Minus 6 is equal to 0. So this equate it to 0 and equate this to 0. And you're going to get two equations in this case because uh, this turned out to be 0. But if you just go ahead and do that, you, you should get uh, b minus 6c is equal to 0 and minus 6b minus um, 6 is equal to 0. So now what you generally what would happen is it wouldn't be this easy and straightforward. You'd actually have like simultaneous equations and you should have the same number of equations as variables or unknowns that you need to find. So we need to find values for b and c and we have two equations. So two equations, two unknowns, pretty simple. In this case, uh, they make it easier for us by not having a c or a second one in here. So we can just go ahead and substitute the value for b over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and label this 1 and 2. So we're going to solve 1 first since it's the easiest one. So this would be minus 6b is equal to 6. So b is equal to a negative 1. So that's our first uh, value that we find. And we can go ahead and substitute this in over here. So we have our minus 1 minus 6c is equal to 0. Take the negative 1 to the other side and you're left with a minus 6c is uh, equal to 1. So c is equal to minus 1 over 6. So now we've solved for actually um, both these equations. And from what I know, this is actually called the particular. I'm not really sure about this, so don't hold me to it. But this is called, I'm just going to call it xp for now. So uh, we can just go ahead and substitute um, of c and b into our initial assumption of an equation, xp is equal to bt plus c. So if we go ahead and do that, you get minus t um, minus 1 over 6. Now I'm just going to go ahead and erase all this to write the final answer. Now the final answer is basically just the sum of the first two equations you found. So x of t is actually equal to xc of t plus x p of t. And as you notice, we solve for both of them, so we can just go ahead and substitute that in. c1 e to the power of negative 3t, that's why I actually wrote it up there, because we need it for the final equation. c2 multiplied by e to the power of 2t minus t minus 1 over 6. And that's basically your x of t. Now they haven't given us initial conditions, so we just stop here. And that's your final answer for 3a.